rise up Whoa, not gonna give up Whoa, we're gonna rise up Welcome to Rise Up, hosted by me, Steve Calm. Today, I'm so excited because we are, we are going to interview, I should say, I'm going to interview John Shiel. He is an amazing guy and he is he's an entertainment lawyer, amongst other things. He's He runs his own publishing company. He actually had a, um, one of his songs placed um, just this, just in the last few weeks. On a, on, a, on a major US show. And uh, so there's so many, he's got so much stuff to share. And and uh, we're also going to, because he's an entertainment lawyer, we're going to be also talking about how to copyright your music, your songs, and uh, copyright and protect any intellectual ideas you have. Like maybe you um, maybe you have a an idea and you need to get a patent for it. Maybe it's the next coolest gadget thing and, and you've been thinking about it and you know that that would make life better for you and for other people. And, and we need to figure out how to patent that. And he gives away so many great um, nuggets and great information on how to do that. And so I'm really excited. It's going to be amazing. And then we, we also talk about some of the, the hurdles that he had to overcome, some of the obstacles he had to go around and kind of figure out ways to um, uh, to get through them. And so that's going to be amazing as well. Uh, but I wanted to let you know before we get jump in is, um, you know, uh, it, it costs money to do these. And um, this one is sponsored by uh, my Patreon account. So if you go over to patreon.com forward slash Steve column, you can become a supporter. Uh, you can buy me a coffee every month, uh, What whatever, every little bit counts. And it, it helps me to enable, um, enables me to keep doing this. And, um, and so, but anyway, well, I'm really excited to dive in. So let's go. Let's, uh, let's dive in. Well, awesome. Welcome, John Shiel. Um, thank you so much for coming in here. Um, um, I'm I'm very excited to hang out with you and talk and just and get to know you a little bit more and find out um how you've gotten to the level of uh some of the things you've done. And um just so people know who 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 you are, just a little bit about you. Um, John is a songwriter, performer, music producer, live tour manager, uh, live audio engineer, and, uh, and a live lighting expert and an entertainment lawyer. Um, but that's not all. You also have a passion for coaching musicians uh, in all aspects of the music business. Um, you also have a record label and a publishing company. So you're basically the whole package. Like if anybody's going to, um, uh, if you've got any answers to anyone's questions, uh, yeah, you're the guy. You're the guy with the answers. Uh, thanks for coming in. Welcome. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here. I, I just love your energy. I've always loved your vibe. You give off such great positivity and it just shines through everything you do. So I feel blessed just to be here and talk to you. And uh, I know we've got a lot to talk about. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm happy. Well, I tell you what, um, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions and then, you know, uh, go from there. So how did you get into musicians? Tell us a bit about your your background. How did you get into music or what was your kind of catalyst to be like, hey, I want to play music, you know, and what is your main instrument, I guess? Well, so my early childhood, I, had, I went to a, a Montessori type school where they introduced a lot of different instruments uh, pretty early on. So we had recorders and I actually was in a Suzuki violin class. Uh, and then I had to switch schools in about the third grade. And my older sister's friend had a saxophone. And it was like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It, it was the moment that I'll never forget. I was I asked her to look inside the case. We were in the hallway in like a stairwell of the, the school, the older part of my grade school. Uh, and I just it just washed over me like this is so cool. This is the neatest thing ever. So I started playing saxophone in the fourth grade. And then uh, some friends of mine were forming a little bit of a band the summer before fifth grade. And this was the time where, uh, you know, Motley Crue and Poison and, and of course, all the 80s hair bands were, were on MTV. And someone said, oh, well, you can't be in the band because you play a horn. Horn players are the backup musicians. You can only you have to be a guitar player, or a keyboard player or, or a singer. Uh, and. You know, it was this guy who didn't play any instruments. He was the lead singer, you know, and we're in like 
fifth grade, right? So, uh, so I went out that day and I got a guitar and I've played guitar and saxophone ever since. And I've branched into a few other things. I play bass and a little bit of mandolin, some keyboards. Uh, I'm actually really studying the piano right now. That's, that's the, I, I just continuously cycle through, you know, to try to up my game in all these different instruments. I, I write on the piano but it's very much just aimed at the studio and i'm not a piano player so what i would like to do is get to the point where i can go out and or, or walk into a party where there's a piano and sit down and sing and play a few songs i, I just think that's like so cool you know yeah. so so that's that's my background that led me to a lot of things and and ultimately when i was in my late 20s um i had gone through many bands and and i was in a situation where I had a child on the way and I, I was looking at my life thinking, what am I going to do? All of my bands keep breaking up. The recording studio that I'm in is just, I, I'm not making enough money or producing enough to make it work. What is a skill set that I could add? And I was already doing some live sound. I was already doing some live video and lighting. Uh, but a buddy of mine who had a studio told me late at night after you know, far, far too many drinks. And uh, he said, none of the people that he worked with knew anything about the law or business. And so he said, you should go out there and get a law degree. If I were going to go back to school, I would go for law and I would go help all these people. And I just felt like that was a way to utilize my skills and talents, maximize them in the service of my community and my community of musicians and, and the, the music scene that's here in greater Cincinnati. Um, and so that's what I did. I, I went at night, I worked during the day and I ended up getting my law degree and took the Ohio bar that same summer and passed the bar. And by the end of the year, I started my practice and we're going on 12 years of uh, a boutique practice that focuses really on the needs of the creative entrepreneur. So bands are obviously one group, but everybody who surrounds the production world, um, has a business and and they often need business help and legal help and and I've I've done divorces and DUIs and all the things that touch musicians' lives but really my focus is on building people up and building their careers and trying to be a coach and mentor and legal advisor to the creative entrepreneur whether they're a musician or a producer or a studio or or you know whatever and I still do live sound on the side so my hashtag on Instagram is Sound Lights Legal. And uh, I just keep doing it. I'm just, just every week. So. That's, so, that's so cool. Just off air, we were talking about, um, you know, you go to so many events and um, in, in so many different fields of life, like, you know, like that you might go to uh, some, uh, I don't know, some event and then uh, in some, some way you might ask the question, a legal question. And the first thing that the panelists usually says is, well, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't, I can't answer this for you straight, you know, I can't give you the exact, uh, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but um, that's actually the opposite for you. You're like, well, I can tell you right now, you got to make sure you sign that and sign this and make sure you get these in a row, ducks in a row and all that. So that's, that's really cool. And and so, so tell me like talking about the legal side of things right now, um, you know, uh, um, Ed Sheeran just, uh, just got his uh, uh, just passed a verdict a couple of weeks ago, uh, actually the beginning of this week, I think it was, but tell us about that. You know, they were suing his, they said that one of his songs sounded like one of the ones that uh, they they were in control of. So t tell me a little bit about uh, what did you see in that kind of story? I'm, I'm curious as a lawyer. <laughs> well, I think it's really interesting because we had, if you contrast this case with the case with uh, Pharrell and Robin Thicke and the Marvin Gaye uh, groove that they kind of appropriated and they lost that case i think in that case there was a little bit more direct connection see each of the federal district courts that handles these has a certain series of questions that they have to ask to themselves when they're trying to resolve this and and one of them is did the artists have access to the previous artists work and in the case of pharrell and robin thick they actually had like tapes and board tapes that they could listen to the the individual tracks and they could more closely emulate them and there was some evidence that they were actually trying to do more emulation or interpolation uh and interpolation is kind of a funny gray area because it's it's sort of copying but not copying it's it's like allowing the groove or the vibe to be adopted by what you're doing but it's a 
it, it's really standing on the shoulders of the previous giant that you're borrowing from. And I think that in the Pharrell case, they got a little too close or Pharrell and Robin thick. Um, but in Ed Sheeran's case, yes, there are plenty of YouTube videos you can watch where you can see the tracks. And if you put them in the right key and you slow them, the one down and speed the other up and get them just right, uh, which is what a DJ does when mixing. Right. So uh, they they would uh, they could show that you could play the verse of the one right into the verse of the other. Um, and their argument was, well, he did this live and he he blended these two songs together live and he um you know it's just so apparent that it's close that they they really thought well he took this and made a song of his own out of it but when you really look at it all he's doing is playing a similar chord pattern that diverges greatly when you get to the the chorus so it's a different song with a different melody and it's really just the chordal elements which if they had ruled in the favor of the the person who controls the song in conjunction with the Marvin Gaye estate, if they had ruled in his favor, then so many people who write songs that have similar chord progressions would be would be in serious jeopardy. So I think the court got it exactly right in this. There's there's certainly levels of questions. Like I said, the did they have access to the original tapes? Were they intending to rip it off? Were they were they just really you know in their own vacuum? And I think Ed Sheeran successfully proved that. When he when he showed up on the stand, he played his guitar and he played like the same chord pattern and he sang a, a dozen or so different songs. And I just watched someone do that last night or Wednesday, Wednesday night of this week. Martin Sexton and KT Tunstall, they are doing a great duo show. It's it's one person performing right after the other, it's sort of a double header of these giants of, of solo guitar and voice. And they both had a moment in their show where they played their song and then they played a few other songs and it was almost like they were saying to Ed Sheeran and to anyone who was watching hey we do this all the time I mean there's the axis um it's it's like axis of awesome or something there is a band that does like a hundred songs to the same four chords or something it's the famous like four chord song that's on you can look it up on YouTube but it just goes to show you that the same chord progression, just with a little different melody and a little bit different rhythm, could be hundreds of songs. Yeah. And so I really think they got it right. Uh, I think they answered it correctly. But just so everyone is aware, the courts do have a series of steps that they have to kind of go through, the plaintiff has to go through in order to present that every element fits. And I just don't think that the Marvin Gaye group had the all of it together to answer those questions in the affirmative that yes, this was in fact infringement. And I think Ed Sheeran, he was upset about it I, clearly, but I think he, he ended up being vindicated for justifiable reasons. And I think for all of you guitar players out there, just play through all the standard chord progressions. And I think that's something as songwriters, we all do. We play these standard pro chord progressions. We try and come up with our own theme, our own song, our own melody. And that's how new songs are written all the time. So, absolutely, and and being a um, a, yeah, I echo that. I echo that a million fold. And I think it's so cool that he didn't, he didn't just uh, pay them off or just didn't uh, like you know um, do a settlement or anything. And he actually went through the energy and the time and the effort to go through the court system and to to make it a law or make it a. Uh, a, a foundation of like no <laughs> that you know that didn't that's not true you know and I'm so glad he did uh he did win that one because as for songwriters everywhere it's uh you know even you're actually the way I write songs is a combination of all the people I've listened to and and loved and I've like might heard of Eric Clapton do something and I'm like I love it I learned it and I just was so into that and that's going to be part of my DNA as I come out. And then, you know, over here, I learned something from Ed Sheeran or uh, maybe a Taylor Swift song or something. And I like that element and, and I, and it's, it just becomes who you are. And so it's uh you know, there's an old saying, there's nothing new under the sun. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know in, in college, I, especially living in the dorms where you're walking through and you're just hearing, you know, sort of filters of everybody's music. I know that I got back to my dorm room and there was something that caught my ear at some point and I started playing my guitar and just in playing, I came up with a chord progression and 
I thought, oh, I've really stumbled on something. This is really neat. And as soon as a friend walked in, they're like, oh, that's that one Dave Matthews song. And so I'm sure we've all rewritten someone else's tune at some point. But it's when you recognize that and you say, okay, I'm going to veer over here. Or, you know, as a sync songwriter, and I will tell you that um, we met in a, in a sync course. And my first song, one of the songs that I wrote during that time period was just placed on a Netflix show. I uh, saw so that. Yeah, and it was a big show too. Love is blind. That's a that's on the top. I think it's top ten or something. Uh, Netflix shows right now. So congratulations. I saw. Uh, that. Thank you. Thank you very much. But that literally was came came from a brief from a music supervisor who said, "I want a song that sounds like this." And I took one of the few songs that they mentioned, and I took the chords and I kind of rearranged them and I played it around with the chords and I. I put it in a different key and I kind of rearranged the order, but it literally started from inspiration from song a four chords became my song. And it's very different, but in a way, I think we all do that. And that was very deliberate, but in, it was also deliberately brought away from the original, but my production style, everything I was gearing up towards was to sort of pay homage to the original. And I think we would be really lost if we didn't have the ability to do that. I think that's where all creativity comes from. Absolutely. So. And um, I totally agree. And so, so coming back to a, like a more of a legal question, what would be the best way to, um, uh, and I, I already kind of know some of the answers here, but I'm, I'm curious on your take um, being, uh, you know, um, a, a lawyer, an entertainment lawyer. See, this is your, right up your field. People always say, um, if I'm going to register my song or if I'm going to copyright my song, I can do the poor man's um, copyright, which is, you know, you you write the song down or um, you record it or something and you send it to yourself. So you post it, pay the post. What, what's the best way? And what do you think of that? Well, that was amazing. Thank you so much, John. Um, you you dropped some great nuggets and some. I'm I'm learning so much already, and it's uh it's really really cool. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and uh, and sh and sharing sharing your uh, in information there. And and um and uh, I want to let everybody know uh, again that this podcast and this interview is brought to you or sponsored by uh, my Patreon account. So if you head over to Patreon.com forward slash Steve column. There you can sign up and you can register and you can um, you can become a supporter and you can for as little as, uh, you know, uh, a cup of coffee a month, you know, it, every little bit helps and it, it helps me to keep going and it gives me an opportunity to um, give my uh, give my son who is still born um, a voice, you know, of sharing um, amazing stories, inspirational stories, motivational messages and, and lessons. And, uh, and hopefully um, you'll head, hopefully this will inspire you to reach your dreams and, and go to your next level and do the next thing that you need to do in order to get, um, to get to your next level, to get to your dreams. Because uh, I always say this, but uh, your dreams uh, didn't give up on you. They're always going to be there. They're always popping up saying, wouldn't that be good? Or imagine that. And so don't give up on your dreams. You, you, you do the work. It's going to take work. And so Anyway, so again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Whoa, we're gonna rise up. Whoa, not gonna give up. Whoa, we're gonna rise up.